spiritual death. The wages of sin is death. Of course there's forgiveness. But we need to confess these sins if we're not walking in love. And it goes a step further. Again, that's what I'm saying. All sin is not the same. It's darkness, but there is degrees of darkness, isn't there? There's, there's degrees of sin. It is true. If you're watching pornography and you're thinking about having sexual intercourse with the woman or the man on that video in your heart and your imagination Jesus said if you look on a woman to lust after her you've committed adultery already in your heart and you would need to confess that if you want to get forgiveness from God you would need to confess that as adultery not oh well, I just watched some porn no, you lusted after that woman or that man. You committed adultery in your heart and you need to go to God and confess that you committed adultery. And is that now, is that as bad as going out and actually having sex with another person when you're married or even when you're not married? fornication or adultery is it as bad I don't think it is as bad for two reasons because you have to ask forgiveness you go all the way out there and commit adultery and you not just acting on it in your mind you have now taken steps to go further into darkness in other words, you've just gone farther and acted out what you've seen. And of course, it's sin to just watch it. It's adultery either way. But the ramifications and the consequences are far worse. And if you're in that, you need to get help for that. If you're watching pornography... You need to go to your pastor or somebody that you trust and you need to admit it. You need to say, look, I need help with this. You need accountability for this. Because it's a bondage. Trust me, I know about these things because I've been in bondage to them. But I thank God I'm free today. So we're talking about anyone who hates his brother, excuse me, We'll go on, verse 14 says, He who does not love his brother, talking about born-again Christians, is held and kept continually in spiritual death. Anyone who hates, now here we go. We're going on, it says here, if you don't love your brother, right? Unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, etc. You're held, kept, you're held in spiritual death. You're walking, as, as it were, in the flesh, like, Paul told the Corinthians, you're, you're as men, walking in the flesh, you're yet carnal. It means you're being ruled by your body and your unrenewed mind. You're not living in harmony with the born-again, recreated spirit that God put in you, the new heart that God put in you when you got born again, when you accepted and confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're not walking in that. If you're not walking in love, but then you can, if you harbor and you continue and you don't repent and you become more hardened in your heart, more hardened in your heart, more hardened in your heart. And bitterness. Folks, this is important. Because there's people today that are in the church that are walking and they some have crossed the line and, and, and you that are watching right now, you haven't just, you don't just have resentment and bitterness now. That bitterness, that root of bitterness is growing up into a tree and it, it says that if you don't love your brother, you're, you're in spiritual death. <clears throat> But verse 15 says this. Look look at this, please, with me. 1 John 3, 15, anyone? 15. Anyone who hates, abominates, and detests his brother in Christ is at heart a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding or persevering within him. Amen. Is serious business. You're not walking in love. You're walking in spiritual darkness. 
you're held and kept, kept captive by spiritual death. Even though you're going to church, you can be praying, you can be doing all kinds of things. I'm going to come to a close in this first part of this, of this, uh, of this message, and we're going to pick up where we left off here. But I want to share something with you. I've only had this happen to me one time in my life. I've had spiritual experiences before. I believe that all of them should line up with the Word of God in the New Testament, <laughs> you know. And uh, we need to test things and we need to prove things out. But I did have this experience. It happened to me uh, four or five years ago. I was uh, seeking God. I was going through a very difficult time. I was fasting and praying. And God was drawing me back to himself because I'd been backslidden and out of fellowship with God. Just, you know, drinking and going out and doing things I shouldn't be doing. And sometimes watching pornography and, and, and you know, nasty, unclean things. And, and, and not my spirit wasn't siding in with this, you know. Your born again part of you, if you're a born again Christian, hates this stuff. But your, your body, your physical body, your mind, you want the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, right? And the pride of life. But your heart doesn't sign in with it when you get the Spirit of God in you, you know? And I, I was repenting of this stuff and just going, returning back to God. Repenting, in other words. And, you know, God was drawing me to himself. And, and you know, after a few months uh, just getting closer to God, you know, the Lord showed me something. And this is relevant to what we're saying. And, I, and, I, and I'm going to say this to you, and you can judge it for yourself. You know, it says, anyone who hates his brother in Christ is at heart a murder. And you know that mur no murderer has eternal life abiding or persevering within him. Murder is not the unpardonable sin. Neither is hating. But you don't want to die in that condition, folks. And I saw this. I was on my bed, and I, there was an individual, I won't say who it was, I won't say if it was a man or a woman, but I knew who it was, and I, 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 I went into what would be what the Bible would call kind of like a trance. I was on my bed, and I was more aware of my spirit and, of course, the Holy Spirit is there. And, I mean, right now in your room, the Spirit of God is in that room. Every single molecule of your being has the Holy Spirit infused in you and all around you. The Bible says, in Him we live and move and have our being. We're like a fish in water. And I, 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 I was completely aware of everything that was going on around me, but I was in the Spirit. John said I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. But I had just a mini little vision or but it fell into a trance i was in the spirit and i saw a room it was a room and it was completely dark there was absolutely no you could not put your hand out in front of your face it was absolutely completely dark and um i i knew somebody was in there i didn't know what exactly it was it? Mean, I knew some kind of being. I didn't know if it was a human being or, or uh, uh, you know, an angelic being or something like that. I, I, I didn't know what it was. But I, I perceived that it was this person, and 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 I said to this person, I said, uh, so and so. I said, what what are you doing in here? And you know, this person that accepted Christ into their life said, I'm trying to serve God. I'm trying to serve God. And I want to tell you something. When I saw that, I cried and I cried and I was overcome by the presence of God. And I wept and I wept until my faces were fountains of tears. And my belly, 
I wept from there. You know what I mean? One of those kind of cries. I was absolutely and completely shocked beyond measure, you understand. I'd never had anything happen to me quite like that before. And God gave me insight into this person's life because it had relevance to me personally. And I saw this person, I know this person, and their life, they, they're not walking in love. They're just not. And they're easily offended and, and bitter and resentful and slow to forgive and slow to repent. And They're not walking in the light of life. They're not walking in love. And because they're not walking in love, they're walking in darkness, like the Bible says. And when you get to that point, and if you don't repent, there's a danger. There is a danger that you could cross over from the sin of not walking in agape love to the sin of hatred, which it says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And according to these scriptures, we know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. If you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You become justified just as if you had never sinned again. I believe that 100%. I know that to be true. There's a great war that's going on right now between the forces of love and light and life, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of our Father God, and the forces of darkness and spiritual death and fear. It's a great warfare that's going on. And God has revealed in his word the solution. Jesus Christ said it. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness or spiritual death, but I'll have the light of life, which is the unmistakable, incredible, amazing, supernatural, agape love of God. The love that caused the Father in John 3.16 to send his son. The love that caused the son to say, Father, not my will be done, but yours. That same love is in your spirit and in my spirit. But because we're not robots, we can choose. We can choose to walk in that love or not walk in that love. That's up to you and that's up to me. So we're going to close off this section of our teaching. We'll hook up uh, the next the next time, and we're just going to keep going. There is a whole lot more to this. And we're not just going to, um, we're not going to just leave you hanging there. We're going to go into this in, in great detail. And um, I want to read it again, verse 14 and 15 in the New King James Version. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Verse 15, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Verse 16, 1 John 3.16. I think it's ironic that John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16 are so similar. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So we're going to conclude with that. And uh, I, I would encourage you on the, on the next um, on the next series or the next uh, part of this to, to just be in prayer. And uh, as I begin to, to move in this direction, I tell you it's been a long time since I've really um, got into the flow of teaching again, and I'm excited about it, and I ask you to pray for me, and uh, I tell you something, I understand, and I want you to, to know this, and look into my eyes, and hear my heart, uh, and people that know me, boy, I tell you, I know what it's like to walk in darkness, 
And I tell you, just like when 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 Jesus was moved with compassion, I was talking to somebody about that today. Move with compassion and with people. And he healed their physical bodies. He is moved with compassion upon us that have been broken and bound by sin and darkness and spiritual death. And so I hope that the spirit with which I'm teaching the word and sharing the word comes across to you as one of um, humility and one of uh, gratefulness and thankfulness for God's mercy upon me because I would be completely lost if God had given up on me for so many years I walked in darkness and I'll leave you with this one glorious scripture Jesus was hanging around with a lot of preeminently sinful people you know they were doing things that were not holy and the religious people got together and said, uh, doesn't your master, uh, you know, why is he hanging out with these tax collectors and preeminently sinful people? What's down with that? If he was a prophet, if he was so holy, hey, why is he hanging out with this bunch? And Jesus picked up on it and he said, they that are whole, they don't need a physician, but they that are sick. He said, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He says, go and learn what that means. They that are whole, they that are well, they don't need a doctor. Sick people need a doctor. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And I tell you something, folks. This love walk is far deeper and far wider than we've ever, ever really given credence to. There is a depth of the love of God that can cause us to be willing to lay down our lives and love our enemies, bless them that curse us, do good to them that hates us, and pray for those that despitefully use us. Supernatural constraint that causes us to do things for God and for his kingdom, for human beings that Jesus bled to death for, for the salvation, to cooperate with the almighty spirit of God for the salvation of lost people that have been bound and blinded by sin and Satan. What do you say? So let's, let's move forward and let's explore this together and see what God has for us because I believe that our, li our lives are going to be changed and I believe that the light is going to come on um, in, in, a, in a very powerful way. So I'm going to leave you with that for now. Thank you for joining me. And uh, we will be getting the next part of this lesson as soon as uh, I can. Uh, it'll be this week. Probably um, I'm going to divide it into three 20-minute uh, segments. So there'll be part one, part two, and part three. Uh, because I believe I can only uh, upload 20-minute segments onto YouTube. The the channel is called uh, The Message is Love, and my Facebook page, obviously, is The Message is Love as well. Please share it with your friends. One last note, and my wife laughs because I say one last note, and 45 minutes later, I'm still going. But I have a message called The Most Important Message That You Will Ever Hear, and it's for unbelievers. People have never uh, accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, and I, I ask you to consider sharing that with people if you're witnessing to people because I believe that in my heart it's the clearest uh, uh, message of salvation that I've ever taught and uh, it might be of value uh, to share it uh, with some people that you love and care about. Have yourself a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and remember God loves you and so do I. See you later.